Hey people, this is episode 215, that's 215, and this episode features one Matt F. Basler. Um, this was a super fun episode for me. I hope you guys, it comes across to you guys that way. Um, the more I get to know Matt, the harder it is to to not side with him over his feud with Shane Presley because he's just a great guy. And he has a lot of similar interests and in, in obscure fandom of movies and horror movies and some some quirky things that I do, which makes, I think, our conversations even better. And I always really, really like his takes on like Marvel's projects like WandaVision, which we dive into a little bit on this. So I hope you enjoy the episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. Again, this is Matt F. Basler. You can follow Matt F. Basler on literally across all the social medias at Matt F. Basler. And you can listen to the Matt F. Basler podcast, which I highly encourage you to do. Um, you know, he, the guy, I don't ever, ever like pulling back the curtain on his quote unquote shtick on his show, but why the, the drastic different in the way he acts when he's just on my show and when he's on that makes me love his comedy stylings even more. So, um, I encourage you to listen to mine and then go listen to one of his episodes because it, it's a, it's, it's a fun dichotomy of, of a character. So give it a try. Um, I don't think I have anything else. All I'm going to do is play the bomb and enjoy. So here it comes. Before we get started, too, but this is—I think this would be a great podcast question. But you have a giant loft and a significant other, so mm-hmm. when you were quarantined, how is it during the pandemic to not go and find a hiding spot from a person that you live with? Uh, I, dude, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to be like a, a word it's together all the time. Yeah, it yeah. hasn't been. It's, it's. I, I think we are uniquely. Uh, I'm not trying to say like we have the best relationship ever, <laughs> but like, I mean, truly, like if we're like, uh, we would choose to hang out with each other all the time anyway. Right. It's it's been fine. It hasn't made a difference. Now I'll I'll say this. I think you know it's cliche or or, or you know it's it's very much a, a fun story to say that oh pandemic's driving me and my wife or my girlfriend right. crazy, but. I don't think me and my wife have had much problems. We've been together for 13 years, married for 11. And you would I don't think it's any different than being together for a year or not. I mean, if your relationship works, it's okay. That said, I have enjoyed having my podcast area in my downstairs sure. room. Oh, sure. No, I yeah, different different couples work different for sure. But uh yeah, I mean, the 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 loft situation has worked out very well for us. Yeah. Um w- uh you know, and I'm glad we didn't find out the opposite after we yeah. got the loft. Like, and I, oh no! And I'm sure, even though it is kind of like I said, it's kind of like a a, a trope of all this pandemic storytelling. But uh, I'm sure it is way more common than people want to let on. I'm sure that there's been more relationships ruined. It's just that you. I've already seen. I mean, I just literally watched. Well, and I guess on that we should get go ahead and get started. Yeah, uh, I watched. I think it's funny that we're doing a pop culture podcast the day before WandaVision comes well, out. Well, yeah. Well, and we'll we'll get into that too. But literally, and I don't know if I'll fit it. I'll probably fit it into the cold open or not. But I just watched on um, HBO Max Lockdown with Anne Hathaway, and I, I can't pronounce his name, but I love the guy from. Uh, He's from Serenity, the assassin. He's also in Love Actually. He's the black British gentleman. Yeah, uh, I, I know. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to butcher it. I'm not even going to pronounce it. Right. But um, and that you know, there's I've seen a couple of shows and a couple of movies that that do this new pandemic storytelling, and that one's pretty interesting because that one was a uh, they were a husband and wife that decided to get a divorce at the beginning of the pandemic. But yes. they have to stay together. I tell yes. you what, it was an enjoyable movie that turned into. It's not a rom com. That would be that would be given that that not enough emphasis on comedy. The comedy is very understated. That said, I laughed because I mm-hmm. love that humor. But it turned into a romantic heist film, if that makes sense. 
I I love a I love a heist. I, I yeah I, I you know I'm a huge Rick and Morty fan. One of my favorite episodes of that was the heist episode of that. But yeah, I love a heist in almost any fashion. And this one was a rather unique version of a heist because it really the heist was just for for lack of a better way to not spoil it, uh, kind of what helps their relationship. Oh, I I, I think that's probably. Everybody, every couple, right, should steal, <laughs> I just steal told, something together. I just told my wife today when we were putting on our masks to go to the grocery store to, to Walgreens or something, I said, let's rob a bank while we're out. I mean, we got the masks on. Well, I mean, uh, do you ever think about... Oh, are we recording? We're this? recording, yes. <laughs> do you ever think about crimes and how, like, if this is the only one I did, yeah, well, I, who would... How would they catch me? Well... well you're you're right, and actually, she brought up. She goes, that never ends well. You usually, she goes, you usually, your friend gets killed or your partner, and I go, well, the, we have a tighter bond. You're you're my the love of my life, and yeah, I gotta think I've met a lot of criminals in my life. I have I have family member that are very bad criminals. I think I'm smarter than most criminals I've met. I think we could pull it off. That's which is probably why you're not a criminal. Yeah, right, right, but. You just do one to try it, just to check it off the bucket list, or even a gas station, right? Like I could maybe a bank is a a little harder, more difficult, would need some more expertise in the hmm. field. I could rob a gas station. Yeah, maybe and maybe find a gas station with a like a really bad attitude attendant. You know, one that's They'd, got it coming. It's their own fault, right? Yeah, it, it, it's a justified uh, uh, heist, um, gas station heist. Or, or just a convenience store. There doesn't have to be a gas station attached. Um, yeah, I honestly, I think it would bring most couples closer together. Uh, you can't. What are you going to do? I mean, anytime you get in a fight, be like, well, maybe I'll just go to the cops and maybe <laughs> it's probably say a few things about you. Super healthy for a relationship is having that card to play. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, mutually assured destruction. Right, right. Uh, and that intense that intensity of the bank robbery or the or the gas station robbery, it's got to bring you closer together. I mean, look, yeah. it did wonders for Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves in that Speed movie. I mean, I don't remember the part where they robbed a convenience. No, store, it's just very but, intense. An intense oh, thing. Got you know what I've I've always wanted to see a movie where it's okay. The opening of the movie is the end of an action movie, <laughs> so it's just this big like, oh my gosh. And then they kill a guy that's like obviously like the guy or something. Right. And there's a big smooch, right? Uh, and then maybe even get like some fun like fake credits for a second. But then the movie is sort of a romantic comedy about the leading man and the sort of damsel or whatever. I can't believe that hasn't been done. And how, right, how their whole romance was made out of this super high stakes pressure scenario they don't really even have anything in common you know like yeah you 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 killed some guys that held were holding me hostage but i don't even i don't even know your last name yeah. like <laughs> because that's i mean there's a significant amount of 80s and 90s action films where the 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 main characters both male and female don't even know each other going into the no. first that minute of the movie 90 minutes later they're madly in love <laughs> having survived oh. death yeah, they're gonna they're gonna walk out of there, and she's gonna be like, "Oh, it's terrible! This this uh, oil rig yeah. went into the ocean. This you know, global warming's gonna be terrible." And then he goes, "Global warming? <laughs> what yeah, do you mean? You're right, you're right." <laughs> and we go from there, you know. Yeah, uh, one's a Republican, one's a Democrat. Yeah, yeah. He has halitosis, something like very small that just really sets them apart. The they get in the car, the radio comes on, and it's playing like you know modern new country and <laughs> she's like oh no uh, n not to say that if you listen to that th that's fine she just doesn't care for it <laughs> right well i tell you what I, uh, since we're 10 minutes into the podcast and i never told everybody we're back i think they could figure it out but in case they do not know i am on this episode as we record on a thursday night with matt basler um i don't really have a direction i think i told you that in the message it's like you know let's just talk about stuff in pop culture and and, and you know i kind of i sat down to write some things that i've been watching or doing in the last week or so and i was like you know what though 
I think for the people that do listen to your podcast, certainly, and, okay, and, yes. and, and that have been on my podcast, because you've, I think uh, the last episode you were on where we broke down the Mandalorian, I think we really let people look behind the cor- curtain that is Matt F. Basler. And yeah. That he's just an everyday guy. I mean, in spite I'm of being just a guy. Yeah, in spite of being a musician, a podcaster, a screen printer, um, a bit of a videographer. You make videos. Uh, I'm, I'm something of a videographer. Yeah. I'm something of an animator. You're, yeah, you're you're quite the Renaissance man. So, but and all of it seems to be inspired by things that you like or watch and see. So I figured, why not we just find out in a good conversation what makes Matt tick? What what is it that inspires Matt? Other other than uh, uh, some techno synth uh, reimagining of tough guy country music, so absolutely, yeah. I mean, because that one's on the surface. That's that's trans. That's pretty transparent with you. That's my main <laughs> descriptor. Yeah, uh, that's the thing I tell people. Say like, oh, hey, what's your name? I'm Matt. I make synth covers of uh, tough guy country songs. Yeah, yeah. The, the in my opinion, the only kind of country songs that are worth listening mm. to in this mm-hmm. day and age. Um. So yeah, so uh, you, you did bring up it's it's funny because you know we did the we recorded last week like a few days before episode four of Wandavision, which I feel like each episode of Wandavision there's something big that is like I one and two were kind of a slow burn, three had a lot going for it, and four even upped it. And if you see the trailer for five, it looks like wow, we're going to go to another level. So it's not like we can talk about five, but you definitely. We did one, two, and three, but we can get into four a little bit because I take it I, that you're watching it. I am watching it, and I would I would love for this when this comes out, people have already seen five, and I say a bunch of stupid things like, "Well, I think what's going to happen is <laughs> this," uh, and and just already have been been proven wrong. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I I love. I think it's truly. Um, I don't know if I want to say one of the best things Marvel's most done. unique, but and and I I feel so one of my favorite things about uh, I felt like Endgame particularly was the first time, uh, and I guess the Inf- Infinity War, right? That's the name of it, right? Infinity War, yeah. then Endgame, yes. Gauntlet is the comic book after, right? Yes. Okay, anyway, yeah. um, I really appreciated in those movies that I felt like they were finally making movies that felt more like comic books because i think you could watch winter soldier and not having seen any other marvel movie and you'll you'll get it you know what i mean yeah. like there's enough there and uh so like in game and, and infinity war i felt were like the first ones that like if you you know in comics i always put the little yellow uh asterisk thing at the bottom like this happened in yeah, Super yeah, Wars, yeah. number two and and I because I remember reading comics as a kid, I'd buy them at like a grocery store. Um, so it's really hard to follow any of the things. So I just like I had this comic where Wolverine fought Wild Child and, uh, it, he, you know, there'd just be all of these like, oh, this happened in Wolverine 45 or whatever. Yeah. Marvel always got and, cute about it too. see issue so and so bub. Or what? Yeah, you know, and I'm like, a- I can't do that. What are you talking about? I don't know what this means. Um so uh, yeah, I I kind of feel like those movies were like the first ones where they were like, we can do we we could just do this now. We don't have to, and I think they'll continue to like, you know, I I don't think they're gonna just go nuts and be impenetrable if you haven't seen all these movies. But that was the first ones that felt like we're assuming everyone kind of knows what's going on. We're not gonna spend so much time introducing reintroducing, and uh, and so now I feel like Wandavision is sort of another. Like, uh, it, it feels kind of comic booky to me, and like fun and weird in a, in a way that, like, um, I don't know that comic books can do, and like other things kind of can't. And uh, it's it seems to be the most obviously the most meta, but the most um, you you certainly have to know about the MCU, or even some. It's even more enjoyable enjoyable as a show if you know the comics it's the first one that they've yeah. really really leaned into that i think well and this that's interesting for me because that this is actually a, a a era of marvel like house of m i don't really know mm-hmm. much about and uh scarlet witch and, and vision uh, i'm not super familiar with uh either compared to like the the other other ones right and um so yeah like just even finding out 
you know, I listen to some podcasts and stuff that talk about, well, this is the comics and, um, you know, so yeah, I mean, this is actually for me kind of the, my, my first taste of that, like Iron Man, Captain America, all of that, that was, stuff. Those I'm are easy like, ones. Yeah. Uh, any post credits thing. I, oh, I know what that is. Um, so that's kind of neat for me to be sort of on the other side of that. Uh, people talking about like Mephisto. I have, I have no idea. I don't know anything about him really right. at all. And everybody thinks that's that's the dude. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't think it is. I, I you know, it, I think we've. I think it's clearly Hydra or AIM in some sort that is um, blocking the signal or doing something. And, and we'll let's let's spin back into the fourth episode where they found out that someone is blocking the signal. Um, yeah. And I, the reason I don't think it's Mephisto is, I don't know. I mean, Mephisto is essentially the 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 Satan of the right. And then. Yeah, that could be a cool bad guy on screen, but I think they step back and they're like, I don't I mean, I don't know that that as a villain and over that's an overarching villain. That's a Thanos mm-hmm. level villain. And I, I certainly wouldn't put it past Marvel to plant the seeds or, or bring that character in. But it but with with all the, the tech looking stuff that's going on in it, I feel like it's probably yeah. more believable that it's a, it's a, it's some smart bad guys. Sure. Yeah, I feel like my my. My th- thoughts is that uh, Wanda Scarlet Witch. Have they ever have they ever called her that at all, or even gotten close to that anywhere? I don't know. Yeah, have they not? They just keep calling her Wanda. Yeah, and I feel like that's interesting because they don't really shy away from the silly names, you know. And yeah, there. but um, I feel like she has created this to protect. Like something was happening. And she did this to protect her and maybe everybody there. But to do that had to... Now they're trapped and now she like wants to keep it going or something. Um, but right, I feel like there's going to be... I feel like we're going to flash back... Well, I mean, obviously they're going to show us at some point. Yeah. But it's going to be a fight with the big bad guy or something that made her make it. Because a lot of people seem to think that she just went and like did it like well that's that's a callback to like house of m in the comic right. books yeah so she kind of had a nervous breakdown and and she's that powerful and this is what happens when uh, yeah. she loses control of her powers i i feel like they will not they might at the end of this turn her kind of into a quote bad guy but i think making her sort of just decide to imprison right. thousands of people makes her such a Sort of maybe almost irredeemable, but then again, Marvel also does a good job of making those things make sense. So if I wouldn't necessarily say that's impossible. Yeah, and they whatever. could do it. They could f- literally frame it around somehow she's being manipulated, or somehow there was a, a some grieving over the um, over Vision, and then yeah. and then her powers, which in the comic they call it chaos magic, and they 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 were warned. Plenty of times by Doctor Strange leading into it that she, what she, the magic that she can, like, so Doctor Strange would frame it as this. He's the master of the mystical arts. It took him years and years to perfect being able to control him. She was born with the ability to manipulate it, but that doesn't mean she's in control of it. Okay. So eventually her powers take control of her. Do you think he's, sh- he's showing up in the show? I, I, I I hope so. Um, yeah. I hope so because apparently, like we've we've talked about on the podcast, how this is going to help play into his movie, um, and, right? And so, yeah. It, and plus, I just I, I love me some Benedict Cumberbatch, so I I, I want to see him on the screen. Yeah. So. I I think that's too. That's a very exciting like. Um you know the, these shows. I, I, obviously, there's movie stars in it already, but like, it it seems like such a new like uh, way to use media, almost in a sense, or maybe that's overstating it. We might even talk about this a little bit last time, but uh, they get to almost make these long movies. Because I don't, I don't think there's going to be a Wandavision season two necessarily. I almost think uh, uh, Winter Soldier or. Um, Falcon and, Falcon Winter, and Soldier. Winter Soldier is going to be almost like it, it's almost going to be like Marvel show season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you know, no, and I think you're keep, right. Keep going like that. And you tell you get to tell this longer piece in between your sort of big movies. Um, and obviously, like, you know, that this it's just such a 
so far away from um, Agents of Shield and even like Daredevil and and uh, those shows, which I, I I liked Daredevil a lot, but yeah, it, it, it wasn't tied in well, very much. Well, yeah, and we talked about on here too, um, and that it, you are right. For one, it is. I don't know if we talked about this or not, but it is very, very weird and cool, and it goes a long way. And I think things like HBO and AMC have allowed us to do this. But, you know, you used to be this giant gap in between TV and movies. Like, one, you were not a movie star to ever be on TV, unless it was a oh, special yeah. appearance on Friends right. with Brad Pitt or something like yeah. that. But and you happen to be married to one of the cast members. Yeah. Now, though, it, it's cool. Not Not only is it cool to make TV, but, like, in terms of just a narrative of, and the ability to tell a story, it's super awesome. Uh, you know, it's super awesome the way they can do this. And we talked about on, on when we were doing the Marvel breakdown, me and Jay, I'm pretty excited that they have all their properties back because I also enjoyed Daredevil and some of the – I enjoyed Jessica Jones. But it's awesome now because there was a limited amount of time to the movies that they could do. Yeah, right. And now it's – the gloves are off. We can do whatever oh, yeah. we want. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, you know obviously too like Wandavision. I mean even even the sitcom element aside, w- wouldn't a movie wouldn't have served this the the right way? Right. Um, uh, so it's just I don't know. Yeah, it just kind of feels like they can do whatever they want, and uh, I, I'm I, yeah I'm I'm really interested to see how they're going to bring in mutants and um, is this is this part of it? Uh, it's a wild time. I, mean, I, I, you know, to to go from like reading comics is is super nerdy, and then you're watching movies like Punisher with Dolph Lundgren and. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you ever see the Captain America with uh, on the motorcycle? Yeah, J D. Salinger's son. Yeah, not uh, kind of weird. Yeah, and they're all bad and like, you know, a daredevil. Uh, when he was in the Hulk and then all that stuff. Yeah. Um, well, or, or, or the uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And just all, and even like honestly, like the X Men movie, which I, I haven't seen in a long time. I bet it is pretty cheesy now. But that was like everyone's like, oh, this is a good, good comic book movie finally. Um, but it was so far from comics, you know? Like, oh yeah, the X Men. They're all in black leather, and it's all like they're kind of like, what did you expect? Yellow span? Like they're making fun of. Like they're like, don't worry, we're not nerdy like the comics. Uh, and you know now there's uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, there's a Scarlet Witch TV show that's insane. Well, yeah. Scarlet Witch TV show that's not a cheesy, dumb like uh, that has a budget, I guess. Yeah, 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 and a massive one. The the but but you you brought up something while ago, and I think it it can be tied into this because you're right. This is if I if. 43-year-old me was to talk to 12-year-old me and told him what it was like now with my, yeah. he'd be like that's your line you know you're right. you're Michael J Fox dressed in the hazmat suit scaring Crispin Glover you know yeah. you're lying to me um but you talked about well ago too in the difference in 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 now and then is i think about it too when you were reading those comics back before and it said see this issue um when when certainly when i was in my eight nine and ten it wasn't until i was like 16 17 that there was a comic book store in every town so oh yeah so finding those old comics were impossible now now there is a not just a comic book store but the largest comic book store in the world at your hand in your hand yeah. every time you can do it now in fact right. like on the marvel app most of the time it'll do it for you <laughs> you know it'll oh, just really? say see this I, issue <laughs> I haven't used it in a long time. I, I tried it out for a couple of months, and and I haven't haven't been back for a while. Well, wait uh, till DC app gets their stuff together. But the Marvel app for me has been very enjoyable. Uh, yeah. I like how they because there's a new story in it called X of Swords, and you know they're only on a three month delay, and they'll just like put X of Swords instead of just having to go find each individual issue and download it. You can actually just download it from the event tab. In the, in the Ooh, right yeah. order, so it makes it so, so that, much easier. Back when I when I tried the app, uh, yeah, it just had a lot of little headaches. A lot yeah. of like, well, wait, what do I? How do I? Um, that's that's really cool. That's that's neat. Yeah, it, it's it's a 
it, it, it's what's crazy is it's a fun time to be a forty year old. I can't imagine what it's like to be a, a twelve and thirteen year old boy. You know, Dude, I say that all the time about everything. Like all the you know, you see these people be like, "I wish I was born in the sixties because the music was blah blah blah." It's like, dude, it's on Spotify. Like yeah. you can do whatever you want. It's so, man, yeah, really. I, like uh, I'm trying to think of like the movies I liked as a kid. You know, anything that was like a property like this, like. Ghostbusters, Ninja you know, Turtles. our two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. Like, this is a pretty good movie. Second one gets, uh, is fun, but... Kind Had of vanilla an ice in it, so okay. Third one's terrible. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and just like this, like, these... But I, I, but I, so I'm watching Ninja Turtles 1 and 2 over and over and over again. There's not going to be a, another one. Like, the, the time between all the fun franchise stuff was so long. I, I know we talked about, like, are people getting tired of superhero movies? And, and yeah, like what I was saying was like, I don't think as long as they're good, nobody yeah. gets tired of, of anything. Like that's the thing. No, they weren't tired of Ninja Turtles movies. They just made Ninja Turtles three. <laughs> they did not like turtles in time. It turns out. it just Yeah. And, and so like, as long as they keep up this, this quality and they keep doing more stuff. And I, I think, right. Like there's going to be a new Marvel show every Friday for like this year. Yeah, they, and, and they, that's, that's crazy. That's fun. I I really like the whole like just thought of 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 like something neat. You know, like even if you're not into it that much, it's just like eh, something to see, look and, forward. To. And they're kind of they're kind of playing it right too because there's going to be a new Marvel show every Friday this year, and there's going to be more Marvel shows to come. But 2022. It's almost going to be the same way starting in Christmas, around the Christmas time, with a new uh, Star Wars show yeah. every week for almost a year. I mean, yeah. it's like they alternate, and, you know, in the world we live in, you know, waiting a year or, or two-year gap is like, oh, what a headache. But to be honest, like you right. said, when we were kids, it could have been eight years between films. Who knows? Or just never. I mean, yeah, as a kid, you know, uh, reading like an Iron Man comic. Oh yeah, you're not sitting there going, "Wonder when they'll make the movie." You're like, "This is some weird niche yeah. nerd stuff." They will, there will never be a movie of this, and uh, and yeah, I mean, it's crazy that Iron Man. It's hard to remember that Iron Man wasn't like mainstream. Like there are people that you could show a picture of him and they wouldn't know who that was. Yeah, you yeah. Know? and in fact, as a guy that owned a comic book store at the time, I can tell you that Iron Man wasn't even flying off the shelves. Until yeah. Robert Downey Jr., you know, yeah. yeah, he was in Avengers, and he's, you know, for those that knew, knows there's been like Demon in a Bottle and uh, the Armor Wars. There were some good stories here and there, mm -hmm. but as a whole, it wasn't like Iron Man was burning up the the Diamond comic right. charts. And then, you know, his, I could have got you back in two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four. I could have got you Iron Man number one for less than five hundred bucks. And yeah. then that movie come out, and guys were coming in trying to sell it to me for three, four grand. I'm like, hmm. I get it, I get it. But and and that has happened on a handful of things, like whether that was uh, Walking Dead did that. Oh um, sure. There's been a lot of things that have done that, but it's just Iron Man was the one. Like to what you said was like, it's weird to think that every scene. I mean, you know. For, for lack of a better way to say it, to, to, to do a very cliche way of saying it, whether you're a jock, whether you're a nerd, whether you're an academic, or well, however you want to say it, you know who Iron Man is. And, yeah. And it's Robert Downey Jr. You know? Yeah. Or dude, even like Thanos. Oh, like, yeah. That's even more like... That's a deeper cut. You know? Oh, yeah. I Actually, Infinity Gauntlet was the first where I had... Because I, I ended up getting the first one at like uh, Kmart. And I had to go. I we went back every week. Infinity Gauntlet was the first like run of comics that I ever had the whole story, um, which takes that's after Infinity War. Right? Yeah, Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet, and then Infinity Saga, maybe or Infinity. I can't remember the last, the third of the trilogy. Well, I, yeah, and 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 again, I had no idea what Infinity War was. I didn't yeah. know what they were talking about. I just thought it was cool that there was Spider Man and weird looking Spider Man. No, oh, six same. Six arm Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm questioning myself now? Um I don't like that. I don't I understand. I, yeah, I don't like uh not knowing what the the comics are. Uh 
It was. This is great. Um, in yeah, ninety two was Infinity War. Then the uh, ninety three Infinity Crusade. That doesn't make sense. I'll, we'll figure it out. I'll do it in sure. post. We'll edit. It. I'll do. I'll dub us, and we'll get it there right. One hundred percent. Make me sound smart. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. It's. Uh, I love this. This has been a great show. Like you said, it's been a very enjoyable show. It, I tell you what. How you know it's an enjoyable show is that my wife has it certainly went above and beyond the amount of, uh, of of geek-centric things in her life than she ever anticipated before she met me. But she even says, <laughs> there's been times in our in our marriage where we went to watch something and she said, no, because you made me watch Game of Thrones, so I can only allow myself sure. so much geekery she, you know, and things. But she saw the trailer for WandaVision. She's like, I'll give it a go. And so we sat down and like she didn't want to appear on the last episode we did because one, she really likes the show, but she's afraid if she dove too much into the Easter eggs and stuff, it'd be way too nerdy for her. But she just loves it on the surface for being a great show. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this. Okay. I've heard people talking about this on podcasts and I and. okay, so uh, Agent Wu, right? Yeah. Was looking for a, a, a informant or what? What was it? A, a witness protection. That's what. Because, yeah, someone had disappeared into witness protection. Yeah. yeah. And every I've I keep seeing people think that that person is important. You know, but I just I, I I haven't listened to that talk and and perhaps I haven't thought about it enough. I don't know who that would be or what that would be. I just I. I don't know, and I, you know, maybe I missed something, but I just thought that was just a random person in that town, and that's why he knows it. it, it this happened. Yeah, that's just and the honest, MacGuffin that got us to where we were. It's not yeah, really that important. Honestly, in a way, that one person turning out to be important is almost too uh, uh, coincidental to me. Like I would yeah. feel like, oh, well, that's. You know, he got brought there by the bad guy. You know, it just, I don't know. I was surprised that I, I've heard a couple different people think that that person is important. And it almost seems that if that, that if that person were to be important, that person would clearly have to be like a scientist or something that the big bad is using, has abducted to help manipulate Scar or something like that. But even that, we don't need to know that person, I don't think, for the story. I didn't think so. And I, I didn't think the show presented it in a way to yeah. make you think that at all but again i feel like you always got to finish these things up by going but i mean you know if it is like uh. yeah yeah i mean i i think we've said this i said this a lot i think well you and i talked about it when star wars uh i know we talked about it in marvel i mean they've bought a certain amount of credibility if that's what they want to do i i guess i'm along for the ride right and, and i do i think they've they have gotten really good at um Doing really like ch- kind of cheese, like uh, saying I am Iron Man, like yeah. being called Iron Man is very stupid in a real world setting, and they have done it in such a way that it it doesn't feel l- lame in in the in the universe you know that they're in. Um, it, and and even you know combining like I think they did a really smart thing of like starting with Iron Man and then. Captain America, and then and then Thor brings in like the sort of magic. They've just done such a good job with making these things like feel right. Because um, you know, if you jumped from Iron Man to Thor, I think it would have been like maybe a little hard to swallow. Like, well, hold on. So now we've got gods, magic, <laughs> yeah. gods, and what yeah. other worlds? And um, so, right, if if they're going to make this uh, missing witness protection person important, I'm sure they'll do it fine. It just, I just didn't get that vibe from it no i like the i I don't know if you have you ever seen the movie office christmas party no 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 it's uh you know raunchy christmas party uh agent Wu's character in that is uh after you've seen him in office christmas party and the fetish he has it's pretty hard to see him as agent Wu and not think that he's gonna bust out his he like he wants to be treated like a baby and his diaper changed in office christmas party and there's some and he's a comedic actor so and that's another thing i love that they've done with the marvel films there's so many comedians in the roles that are playing essentially straight straight people and that's it's worked out perfect yeah yeah i mean well that uh, casting overall right like that's they've they've nailed it uh so well um 
I guess, I mean, right, like, that's like people talk about video game movies. I saw an article the other day that was like, why are video game movies bad? And it's like, because they're bad. Bad movies. Like, it's not, yeah. There's no secret. Video game movies, it, it doesn't mean anything that they're based on a video game. It, it's just that they're not getting the right people, talent to make these movies. The, Any, the filmmakers movie. are trying to make a video game movie instead of just trying to make a movie. Right. That's worth watching. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, and they they do the thing too, like right? Like uh like obviously like that first Mario Brothers didn't you Ugh. know, they didn't want to make just a Mario Brothers. They're like, Well we can't have the t- talking turtles. We need uh we need to make this We need John Leguizamo. <laughs> yeah, and they're like some sort of weird dystopian future uh, That's the head scratcher of all of them, right there, though, right? The Mario Brothers right. is the big. I mean, the most beloved franchise at the time, the most known video game character in the world at the time, um, and you made that movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's bonkers. And like, you know, I think I, I would say maybe Mortal Kombat is the the most. It's a very cheesy movie, but it like embraced the things that made it a video game yeah. more than most video game movies. I, I was going to say all other, but. That's the kind of thing you get yourself in trouble because you say all of them, and then someone goes, well, what about? Yeah. And then you're like, well, yeah, no, okay, you're right. But, uh, you know, yeah, video, I think if, yeah, if Kevin Feige was making video game movies, they'd be good. Yeah. If you had good people yeah. making the movies, they'll be good. Like, it, nothing nothing is, like, predetermined to be, to be bad. Because people said the same thing about comic book movies. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we. I mean, they they stumbled out of the gate, it, with the exception of. I mean, the, from Superman to Batman to the current MCU, there's a lot of swing and misses in between there. Oh yeah, yeah I mean, and a lot. And even those started getting into a bunch of swing and misses. I mean, it was Superman one, and then by God, in the third one, we had Richard Pryor. You know, and right. it, and I love that movie. By the way, I'm not pooping on that movie. I enjoyed the hell out of that movie, but still. Well, and you can enjoy movies and recognize that well, maybe this ain't the best right, movie ever. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, Batman. Uh, yeah, Joel Schumacher forever. got involved involved right. in, and put nipples on the bat suit and gave us penguins on roller skates. I mean, it's and, insanity. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, I, I think that about franchises a lot. Like, uh, I, you know, I was really excited for, like, World of Warcraft, right? Like, I was excited oh, about that, cool. yeah. This will be a cool. F- I, you, there's so many stories you could tell, so many different r- r- races of creatures and things you get into, and then the first one's not good, and you're like, okay, well, that's that's that. If yeah. it had been a good movie, I was we'd be knee deep in World of Warcraft movies by now. I was very disappointed. I, for one, I was very excited at the possibility of Guy Ritchie doing the uh, Arthurian sagas and. With the King Arthur oh, and all, right. and then he released that movie with Charlie Hunnam, I, who I think, and it's it's a god awful movie. And I didn't I'm, see it. And he was, it, you know what? There is something to be said too. And you see a report like so and so is going to make this story, and they've already signed on to do five pictures. Yeah, like whoa, okay. Well, let's see the first one. <laughs> you know? And uh, well, and uh, you know, they always they should say that after they say sign on for five movies because that's not a no. done deal, like, right? That, first was bad it's not gonna and, happen and marvel even though dc is making movies in spite of bad reviews sometimes it's not like there is a i mean name the be- the biggest franchises current outside of the marvel movies yeah there's the fast and the furious but there's the you know harry potter which has came and gone but there's a lot that, i mean there's more that have failed than have succeeded you know oh, right Oh, the the uh, the dark universe, the uh, um, oh the mo- mo- movie monsters. monsters, yeah, the universal yeah. monsters, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, uh, that was a bad one. I'll say this though, um, uh, the monster, or the the giant monster universe seems to be working. I can't wait for Kong versus Godzilla. Well, that's interesting too, because I would have. I don't think people know that that's a connected. I would. I think you could tell people that, like, yeah, remember Kong Skull Island. Yeah. And they would go, oh, that's that King. That's the, oh, yeah. not King Kong. We can't say that because of uh, copyright or right. something. Like that's why he's not called King Kong. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I feel like people don't know that Skull Island is like part of that. Yeah, a lot of people thing. didn't set through the credits. 
Um, which is probably, yeah, right. I mean, I guess in, <laughs> in a sense, right, they did it sort of the right way by, like, not whatever not not forcing it in there not, right uh not from the jump being like yeah but well, this is going to be this big huge like the first godzilla stands on its own is just a movie uh they didn't say oh yeah this is going to have six other the mothra movies coming out tomorrow right whatever it just they found out it worked and they kept going so and yeah you have your you have your plan but like you, uh, I, I, I would have loved to have seen a DC done like Marvel, like yeah, taking their time. I and, think the the biggest reason that we haven't isn't creative people, isn't anything other than a studio not wanting to be accused of ripping off a formula. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. it. I think it's Hollywood. I, I think that is the people in the nice suits saying, "Well, we, we're we're original. Let's be I original." Think it would be cool if if we were had a very successful DC franchise and. They were going. Yeah, we ripped them off. What are you yeah, doing? yeah. You, we're what all making. We're all making billions. Who cares? Because <laughs> they did it right. Why I, try to reinvent the wheel? And, and honestly, right. Honestly, you could go if you were. If that was your fear, someone in the room should say, "Hey, we're taking all of this from comic books." Yeah, right. It's been we're a already, same. They were already a similar format to begin with. So who cares? There's nothing original. It's Did, all. Just derivative, change it up. He, the one person could say, "How about we literally don't do post credit scenes and we're different? Nobody will accuse. If we yeah, do that, right. then they'll accuse us." Hey, you did bring up something, uh, uh, the monster universe, and I wanted to ask you something specifically about a sequel of sorts that I don't think people know about. I think you watched it uh, via your um, Facebook story. Did I'm you guys just hear. watch the? Mo- and I know your your I know your girlfriend likes scary movies, right? That's true. That's true. You guys watched the newest Wrong Turn recently, or was that the original? No, we we started watching the original. We, we wanted to watch all of them. Okay, uh, and then and then catch up. Yeah, because there's a brand new one coming yeah, out, yeah. and it looks pretty good. Like, I yeah, that's I mean yeah the the trailer was enough. For us to go, like, yeah, we ought to revisit. And um, yeah, well, when I watched the trailer, I was like, huh, I wonder if they know they're ripping off the name of an older scary movie. And then I looked at the director and the story, and I'm like, oh no, it's the same universe. Uh, is it actually like a sequel? Yes, it's a true sequel to it. Oh, I did not know that. I I uh, I thought it was a. Fl- I mean, you know, it's like reboot, remake, yeah, reimagining. reimagining you know, there's yeah. so many different things. So I guess you what probably call it like a reboot sequel type of situation um i i I would imagine the references to the original are easter egg type yeah yeah you're gonna have to know these characters or something that's actually that's that's cool that actually has me a little bit almost more excited to to see it and Um, i don't i that's why i didn't know if it was out yet or not um i I do but i think it is because i i have some friends who have seen it i've been uh going down when I when I'm stuck here at home for work, or even like on the weekends when we very rare that we have nothing going on, uh, I've been going down the rabbit hole of certain movies that I otherwise, especially when the wife's around, otherwise wouldn't not because she loves scary movies, but it's got to hit her like you, you got to do the right poster. You got to have the it's like a bottle of wine. It's got to be the right label before she'll even sure. take it home. Uh, but I've watched some on Amazon Prime in the last few days. Um, and older ones, like I watched a movie Southbound uh, today. I don't, yeah, I don't know. and it's awesome. Cool. So, <laughs> flashback to our childhood, and there was this really cheesy. Um, I can't think of the name of it. it. Was like high. It wasn't Highway to Hell. It wasn't an ACDC song, but it was like Hell's Highway or something. There's a there is a Highway to Hell movie, I believe. And, and I think it's just where they uh, this certain stretch of the road, and you fall asleep. Yes. Yeah. And you're in hell. And yeah. yeah, okay. Well, this I think it is called Highway Dale. Yeah, which is it, it, I love that movie as a kid, but there's uh this one is kind of I mean not not only like that in spirit in a sense that the movie starts literally by these people being stuck on this road and it's like four or five individual stories that are all intertwined. Um and I got to tell you it's a it, it, if you've not seen it and if 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 the girlfriend hasn't seen it you need to watch it because, and it's on Amazon Prime, and it has some fairly f- sort of famous people. It's got uh, Hasey or Hassey or ha- however you pronounce her name, Harrison. She's on 
Tacoma FD. Most recently, she was also in Yellowstone. So this has to be early in her career. Yeah. There's a girl named Hannah Marks in it who I know from Dirk Gently on BBC. Yeah. But she's been around. Um, it, it, it's... I tell you, it's very much, and what I liked about it, it turns out to be like very circular storytelling, a la Donnie Darko or, or, sure, yeah. or, or even Lost Highway, something like that. Not quite as clever as either of those, but certainly worth watching. It And it all revolves around these are all like demons and devils, and yeah. they turn your own fears against you and stuff like that. What's this? What, what's it, what is it again? Southbound. And it was from yeah. 2015 on Amazon Prime. And which I know this is going to sound like I didn't accomplish much today because I had a lot of uh, clerical work for work. But I also watched a movie from 2013 called Coherence. Oh, have I seen this? Tell me about it. This is uh, a comet over while they're at a dinner party. A comet goes over the and it creates this time and split reality paradox. And they really lean on Schrodinger's cat and all this stuff. And Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it, it has entered my I don't remember anything about it what? realm of movie watching, you know? like It was way more clever than I expected, and I loved the end. And, and by the way, this is from 2013. Uh, if you want to watch it on Amazon Prime, great. If you, if you guys have, or have, I don't care if you're going to watch it or don't have a clue to watch it. I'm going to spoil it a little bit. But I love when the moment, when the I guess the main character, the woman, Writes, starts writing down everybody's number from the back of their picture, and they're all different numbers. And she realizes that they're every time they go out, they come back to a different yes. reality of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she tries to s- supplant the one good reality that she found. And uh, just, a, I thought it was an awesome movie. Yeah, I I, I remember liking it. And, and um, if, and from 2013, so I don't know how. I guess I guess my age is why, but I'm like. Were I in my twenties, there's no way those movies would have slipped by the goalie. I would, I, whether it was a friend that worked at a video store or just very pre-internet, I would have found out and watched those movies. But now, right. I guess that's the amount of content that comes out now. It's hard to catch Dude, it all. I'm still freaking out that you've seen Highway to Hell. I and it's very funny because I remember. So I watched it a long time ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I think about it from time to time, and I go. Was it really that they couldn't fall asleep? Because they knew that, right? In the movie, someone tells them, don't fall asleep on this certain place. And then they do. And I was thinking, like, even if you thought it was not true, even if you were like, well, for one, you shouldn't fall asleep <laughs> yeah. on the highway at all. Well, why are you falling asleep on the highway? But if someone was like, hey, if you if you fall asleep on this one spot, you'll go to hell. I would think you'd be extra cautious just to be like, uh, you know, maybe I'll roll the window down here. Really keep myself alert. Uh, I had to I had to look it up um, from the post just to look at the poster, and it is. I mean, it's the you remember the cop, the the devil cop. Yeah. And I don't know why I remember this, and I'm not. I, I'm actually not recording because of the way I set up. I, I wanted to fix the sound a little bit, so I have two computers. Um, one being my work, so I don't record anything on it. But the, so people can't see it. But the cop, there was no lock or handle on the door. And I remember he'd walk up and do that, and that would open his door. And it was that hand gesture. So the guy mimicked him, and that's how they stole his car in it. God. And, it's, yeah, I, I need to watch that again. Dude, do you, have, you ever – I'm going to do a little ad for a little uh, uh, streaming service. Do you have Tubi? Are you using Tubi, Tubi. on anything? No, I've seen it, though. It's it's uh, it's like one of those ones like where when people say, like, oh, it's on Crackle, and everyone will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, are yeah. you talking about? But it has so many old uh, horror movies, um, a lot that I've I've never heard of, but uh, j- just a lot of really good um, th- things that I'm actually surprised are on streaming at all. Because you know, a lot of like the VHS era stuff isn't getting no, they, they never made it to DVD. It's not getting, uh, but but I, I wonder now. Obviously, making physical media was a little more intensive than just digitizing it, dropping it on a, on a stream. Uh, but yeah, we were watching um, the other day, The Burning. Uh, it's real Friday Thirteenth vibe. Uh, I think Savini maybe does the special effects in it even. Um, and it was The Burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, they just have a ton of good old cheesy 
horror movies that uh, even like Shudder doesn't seem to be too interested in. Like, uh, and we do love Shudder, but there is a significant amount of the cheesy era that's not represented on it. Yeah, this yeah. is like a ton of '80s, just like you know the type type of movies that like when you're a kid and you like walk into the horror section and you're like looking at the covers and going like, man, I wonder, I bet that one's crazy. Uh, it's all movies like, like that. And then you watch them and they're like, the burning, crazy. the burning, uh, the killer used hedge clippers, huh? For um, oh, the yeah. burning. And oh, yeah. I, I gotta tell you what, um, this, Cropsy. apparently this is on shutter. Uh, but these posters for the burning make me miss the eighties. These are awesome. <laughs> Uh, just yeah, scrolling through the the horror movies on Tubi is like a cool like they're all great. It's man. like walking down the scary movie aisle in your VHS store. DVDs didn't even do it as well. Uh, no, I used to no. do the local one when I was a kid, and the reason it, probably the reason I'm able to do a pop culture podcast is you know mom that bartended on the weekends and and had a day job during the week, and so I was by myself a lot. And the local store, which was Kind of, I mean, it was owned by a family friend. They had a seven movies for seven days for seven dollars. Yes, and so uh, yeah. I would always pick out just seven movies on a Friday and watch them over the weekend, all of yeah. them. And I always had a theme, whether it was martial arts or ninja movies or scary movies or or raunchy comedies. It was always something for me. It was always I never I never bought. I rented seven distinctly different movies. It was like seven movies that there was a through line on See, why I had them. That's very funny because I had a, uh, it was only five, I think. It was like five for five for five or something like that. But uh, I always picked a different genre for every movie. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted the variety pack. So I would never pick two of the same. Like no, it would, it would only be one. I bet I would get more horror movies than anything else. But but even then, it would be like, oh, one's a campy slasher, one's a more supernatural or whatever. And uh, and that's what's brought us here today. That we yeah. that we had. The, yeah. uh, I can't blame my mom, but I would. I mean, that's how I saw the hot dog, the movie, which you know, as a oh yeah, as a. I mean, if anything could kickstart your puberty as a kid when you're that age, I mean, with something like yeah. Hot Dog. Dude, I remember when, when the internet first started being like a, a real type of thing and typing in like goriest movie. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny to think like, because it would, you know, it'd be things like, uh, there was a site, houseofhorrors.com that I would always go to and, uh, you know, I tried, I tried it. Uh, try to track down all the movies on there, but it is kind of funny to think like how tame because you just people just didn't know everything that was out there. Even you know you sort of take if it's on a website, you, you assume that this person on a website knows everything, but at the time they couldn't really research anywhere else but like right. Fangoria <laughs> or something if they don't have all the issues or whatever. But yeah, there uh, was no vast network like we have now. Yeah. It was you were. That that is a good point. You were really trusting the uh, how deep the expertise of that person went in their life because <laughs> if they didn't get out right. of the house much, it was very hard for them to see all enough to really qualify a list. And yeah, man, you find another another site that finally had like one more crazy yeah. horror movie on it. Like, oh, I gotta find it. Uh, oh, I man. remember going to conventions and stuff, and you know, because like I was saying, like not everything made it to DVD. And oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was one of the good things about early, especially when I got old enough to drive and, and certainly got into college about going to comic book conventions was the uh, the bootleg DVD table where someone took the time to burn it onto DVD. Yes. Uh, oh, man, yeah, I got a lot of weird uh, – because I'd always go up and be like, what's the, the goriest movie you have? Got a lot of weird Japanese stuff. Oh, yeah. That way. Uh, um, that's how I saw Cronenberg's uh, – uh, um, Original Fantastic Four, the one that he made just oh, to. I've never seen it. I, yeah, I, I would. I would love to. Yeah, it's um, it, it, to this day. I think it's worth watching, and there's a pretty fun documentary on Amazon Prime about it. About yeah, how the people that made it did not know they were not making a big budget movie. <laughs> they they thought that That's, they were making a big movie because they just had to do it right. Was right. that the idea? Like, In order to keep just, the rights, he had to get a film right. out. Yeah, as fast as uh, he could. The one of the weirdest ones I ever got was a, a movie called Ebola Syndrome. Oh boy! Where this guy, um, he he 
contracts Ebola, but he's he's only a carrier. He doesn't have any symptoms, and uh, it's he, it's timely. Uh, exactly right. He figures it out. He figures out that he has it, and then he tries to give it to as many people as he can. Oh yeah. And it is it's a nasty movie. It's a uh, it's like and it is Japanese. Oh, it's disgusting. Man. Yeah. It's, um, definitely. Uh, uh, I would not recommend it unless you are. There's some cool camera to, angles in it. Uh, the through the teeth camera angle I see in the when yeah. I, do. I, I definitely. Um, I, I wouldn't say I uh, like it or it's a good movie, but it is an interesting curiosity, especially if you do like just super gross out. Um. Uh, it would it would definitely be canceled. Uh, oh yeah! In, in, in now there there's a lot of questionable behavior. I watched. Um, I'll, I'll I'll tie this back to to modern day stuff here in a second. But I remember uh, in around ninety nine two thousand um, when I was the I'll say their name now. None of the owners still own. But when I used to work for V Stock and I was uh, um, I, I, before it was V-Stock, it was still called Vintage Stock. Are you familiar with V-Stock around St. Louis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it used to be Vintage Stock, and it actually originated from a store called Book Barn in Joplin, uh, who I was a customer at. Then I became a manager in Springfield for them and then went to Kansas City. Um, but I remember I was working for them when Audition hit the United States. Yeah. And I, and we sat and watched that one night and I was blown away. Like this, you can make a movie like this. This is awesome. Uh, uh man, I haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, yeah, that's a that was a rough final twenty minutes of the film, or yes. however long that lasted. Well, I, that actually, that was one of the ones I found through. Like, what's the most messed up? Yeah. And uh, for so much of the movie, I remember being like, "Well, this is, what are you talking about?" And uh, and then they really they really uh, do it in the last. Yeah, it's a it's a real finale. We, you know, we would do things kind of the same way. Even when, even when I got older, like, like, like I said, like when I was in my twenties, we would, you know, lean on the internet in our store when it was slow, or and then ask some of the patrons that would come in to the V stocks and stuff, like, what's the greatest hatchet scene in movies? And we would, you know, get a French film or something and watch some, just some outright disgustingly bloody oh, yeah. movies, and yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, certainly sometimes there's art to it. And then other times it's just we're going to get the gore and that's it. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's uh, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I didn't I didn't like gore for gore's sake sometimes. Well, I, I, but you know what? I will say a lot of times in those kind of movies, it's not played in a it's so unrealistic. Oh, yeah. Like where it's like a, a a saw or like hostile, like you you like feel that like the emotion behind it. Yeah, when they're when they're killing a, someone in these like eighties and like these like over the top movies, it's almost like well, it's not even a human; it's just a sack of <laughs> meat and and blood. Like you don't gotta you don't gotta feel bad for them. Yeah, and I tell you, hostile even more so than saw, and saw certainly was in there. Hostile was uh. Sometimes I give people credit for being able to just get something into theaters. I mean, yeah. Hostel really pushed the envelope of, of of you know torture porn that that those underground people. That was the first time I think the underground horror fans and the mainstream fans were like, "Well, we can get together behind this movie together." Right, right, right. I, yeah, I haven't seen Hostel in a long time either. I, I wonder if I would. I, you know, I, I think that can be a weird thing, especially with horror movies. Maybe that. Um, probably not, especially, I don't know why I would say that like that. Sometimes you just want the thing you're talking about to be the most important thing, you know, right, uh, right. I, was, I was thinking, well, no comedies do the same exact thing, but like, um, at, you know, at the time I really liked hostile, but I, you know, I don't know. I just feel like uh, your, your opinion on that stuff can change. The, yeah. The, uh, this is going to be, uh, for some of the listeners that, know what a fan of scary movies and stuff I am, uh, this one's going to hurt some people. Um, growing up, I was just an ungodly fan of Reanimator. I thought it was one of the greatest movies I ever saw at the time. Okay, when, let's, and you can just stop. When, right when I let my wife watch it on Halloween, I was like, I still enjoyed it, but I'm like, you know, this isn't quite as good as I remember it. And that doesn't happen a okay. lot, because like, right. some of them I still... 
I still like some of them. Like I, Sleepaway Camp to me still had the best. You know, that's one of the best series ever for me. And, oh, it, it's great. I, yeah, and, and and you know, I think even without the ending, Sleepaway Camp is a great movie. Yeah, and it, what what's weird about Sleepaway Camp is. Uh, as you're watching the movie, you feel – you really, really feel – it's not a bad movie, by the way, like like you said, without the ending. But you feel like, well, it's kind of like a PG-13 scary movie. Like It, it definitely – They didn't go it, over the top with the blood and the gore. It was like they yeah. were saving it all for that final scene. <laughs> I, man, I wonder. I mean, probably not, but it does almost seem like – I wonder if like the MPAA was like, got to cut the ending. And they're like, well, what if we cut – Everything you don't you don't see him go in the soup, and then they're like, mm, "Sorry, you got to cut that ending." Like, yeah, okay, but what if she just holds the curling iron, and you know what happens? But that was um that was probably of uh, because my wife you know uh, uh, is a she's an even bigger scary movie fan than I am, and but that said, she hasn't seen as much as me because she didn't have a you know a misspent youth like I did. Um, sure. Yeah, but. When we watched, and that was back in October, it was when she first never saw that movie. Net didn't know one thing going into it. All I told Ooh, her, "That's good. I would love to sit." With oh, someone. it was the be- and all I told her is, "You have to watch this movie." And she's like, "Okay." And I could see in her face during the movie, she's like, "Well, you know, I like scary movies, so I'm going to keep giving it a go." And I'm like, "No, the payoff's good." And when that final scene and that freeze frame hits, she that turned face. and, she, oh yeah, she was like, "What did you make me watch?" <laughs> like, I, man, you know I, that would be a good movie for him to make a. Uh, I, I'd watch like a mini series about just the the kids living at that house with that lady. Oh, uh, so surreal. That it was so yeah. surreal. Yeah, uh, I always I can't. I, it's very hard to follow who. So their dad. Well, whatever. We shouldn't even get into it. Yeah, yeah. We could do a whole episode on Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> their dad is in the water with. It's his, he's gay, right? Is that yes. part of it? Yes. Or, I mean, not part. Doesn't. But like. Well, that would for the purpose of the movie. That was a big part that kind of shaped what happened to the to them. Right, yeah. and that's kind of a weird like. Well, yeah, I don't know. Whatever, I really shouldn't get into it because yeah. you go. You, they make you go a point in the rabbit hole. yeah. They make a point in the movie to seem like that's important, but it, but like yeah, like it's not. <laughs> it I, has nothing I, to do with I, the story. If I remember right, they do a whole bunch of like it, it's all Fa- this like, fantastical well, this dream this sequences, uh, like with him and his lover and like yeah. being seen and like you know intentionally fantastical scenes where. It's just a black room with a light on a bed, and you know, yes. a 360. It's like on a tar- turn, uh, a revolving stage. It's weird. It's weird, but it's it's, it's worth great. it. It's worth it, and everyone should see it. Yeah, and uh, the other movie that she really really liked, um, and she really got mad at me was we watched um, uh, Last House on the Left. I think that's what it was. The the remake. I haven't and, seen, I've seen. I've seen the original. Well, and I told her, and she, she she was like, "Yeah, this is fine." I go, "You know what you need to do, though. You need to watch the original." And I mm-hmm. told her, I said, "Because the original feels like it was filmed by a bunch of people tripping acid, and maybe this was a real thing that where they were doing. Like they, they didn't do yeah, any stunts. Right. It's and, like a nasty little movie. It's very like." And I, gr- grimy. And yeah, it, it's dirt. You feel dirty for watching it. Yeah. And I fell asleep while we were watching it, but she couldn't take her eyes off. She watched the whole thing and she woke me up scared to death. She's like, that's one mm-hmm. of the scariest movies I've ever seen. I'll tell you, man, I, I, there, there's something about revenge movies that like, I, I think I, my, my, my assumption is that because I, I in my day to day life, I would never do anything. Like I'm, uh, uh, well, you know, pacifist, pacifistic, <laughs> sure, to, to sure. a fault, right? Like if somebody cut me off, I'm just whatever, just it's fine. So there's like it's like playing out this fantasy of like uh, getting revenge on even any any slightest smallest thing. So like movies can be pretty terrible, and if it's about revenge, I'm like that's pretty good. I, yeah. I liked it, <laughs> which is probably the exact nerve they're trying to hit when they make those right, films. Yeah. Right? Um, hey, I watched another one to get off. Not, I mean, it's to get off of scary movies, but it is kind of a dark movie. Um, I watched another one uh, this week on Hulu. 
Um, have you seen The Art of Self-Defense? N- no. It's it's so it's Jesse Eisenberg and I know I I wanted to see it. I I I remember seeing the stuff and thinking it looked it's kind of a kind of a weirdo movie, right? It, yeah, like it's a, so it's him and uh I'm Gene Poots who I like a lot. Um yeah. and I actually Oh, dude. For as much shit as he gets, I don't have a problem with Jesse Eisenberg. I think he's a very good actor. I, and and even in uh 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 Justice Justice League. Yeah. Was he a Batman vs Superman? He was in Which one Dawn was of Justice. Yeah, um, I th- I feel like he did exactly what they wanted him to do. Yeah, and he did it. He did a good job doing. You know what I mean? Like I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have a problem was, with him or Jared Leto. It was the type of what bad guy they wanted for the film. Right. It's it's not their fault. <laughs> I don't yeah, think at all. I, told, I mean, yeah, right. That yeah. Well. So in order of self defense, and by the way, they tag teamed on another really creepy sh- suspense movie called uh, Vi- uh, Vivranium or Vi- Vi- Vivranium. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so it's a, you know it's kind of the same feel in terms of it's an odd film. Um, yes. Although that movie was trippy. <laughs> that was a that was a very good one. I enjoyed that one a lot. I I really liked it. I it, it kind of falls under. I, I have this category of movie that's like maybe it would have been a better like forty five minute. Short, Tales from yeah. the Crypt, uh, Black Mirror, I can you know, see that. Twilight Zone, but I did really like it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, this one is also. I mean, this one is. He gets beat up. He's a. He's a very. He's a um, recluse, uh, awkward guy, scared of everything, and he gets beat up and mugged, and he goes and takes karate in order to make himself better, and it goes very dark from there. Yes, you get in a red stripe by killing someone on your belt and. Um, it, it what it, I tell you what this one what I like about this one and it, and it I mean it's no masterpiece, but what I like about it it's if Wes Anderson wanted to make a very dark bad uh, a scary movie yeah it, this would be felt, a Wes that Anderson was the vibe I remember yeah um, gosh you're right though that that is kind of the thing so much stuff comes out because that was definitely like on on my mental list of movies yeah. to see and if you don't catch it. Right away, it just sort of, he said that's on Hulu though. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, oh, it's worth cool. watching. It, it's a uh, you know the if the pandemic has done any positive, it's gave me the chance to watch a real lot of movies without yeah. anyone bothering me. Even and not that my wife bothers me, but there's certain movies she would not watch. Uh, Art of Self Defense that wouldn't be her 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 cup right. of tea. But I can find I find time to be able to fit that in. So you're you're on record as saying that you're pro pandemic you this has been great for you yeah. yes no okay. uh, i mean okay. i thought i didn't even have to say that on record but yeah uh, well, no sure 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 yeah i i've seen your t-shirt um <laughs> uh uh make well, america right. sick I, again uh, it's the yeah, shirt right. yeah um keep america sick. keep america yeah. sick yeah uh i wasn't gonna say anything i emojin poots made me think of uh she's in green room oh i loved um, green room i think dude i the, it is to me almost like the uh, ho- uh, diehard of horror movies. Who's, who's perfect, the guy in it? Who's the main guy in it? Um, uh, Anton Yelkin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah. And he's awesome. Oh, it's uh, uh, I man. There's something about that dude that I is like the most tragic actor yeah. in death. Uh, I watched. I mean, the, obviously, just so young. The like, Abram Star Wars, and I watch him in that. I was yeah. like, he was so good. Uh, he's good in everything, man. Uh, Alpha Dog with old Justin. Oh Timberlake. yeah, yeah. Uh, he's great. One of the most depressing it, it, movies ever made. Yeah, I, I just I feel like the, uh, celebrity deaths don't ever really, uh, you know, because the most time they're very old, and you're yeah, it's just like yeah. oh yeah. I mean, it's a bummer for like their family and stuff. But uh, man, him dying, I just I really felt like yeah, I I get that. It's kind of like with Chadwick Boseman, I have that like their star is on the rise. Oh yeah, like, it was a rocket ship going it's north, just such man. A, a bum, you know. Um, he but, was great uh, in uh, the and, and this was an underrated scary movie, uh, Fright Night remake. That was a pretty solid movie. Oh, I didn't see who, who uh, Anton Yelchin is in it. Is he? I, well, I, yeah. It's I, I and and then the bad guy is. Um, Oh, uh, God bless. What, what What's his name? Um, 
He's in SWAT, which is not the movie that he's known for. He's in the awful Miami Vice remake. Uh, yeah, he's Colin in Farrell. SWAT. Colin Farrell. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very funny. I picked the point. worst two Colin Farrell movies to relate Dude, it to. Come on, SWAT. I you watch know. it. I like it. You're either SWAT or you're not. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I mean, any chance I can talk about Green Room. It's just a per- I think it's a perfect movie. Uh, it really like like and that's how I think of like Die Hard. Like even if you don't think it's the best movie as an action movie, it's just so like tight. And, and what mm. would you change about it? And nothing. And uh, and a lot like Green Die Room. Hard, it had a very incredibly good actor as the bad guy. Yes. A very. Yeah. Compelling yeah. Uh, guy and, and an awful person, but like still a magnetic yeah. character. And uh, uh Man, I, I, I feel like that's maybe not underrated, but like under underseen. Like I feel like that should be like. It, it certainly got the, great reviews, and I know a lot of people that saw it and loved it. But I guarantee there's a lot more of my friends that have not seen it, and they're yeah, they'd be better for watching it. Yes. Oh, it's I, honestly too. Like as far as I, I watch so many scary movies, and I don't really think any of them are like scary. There's like yeah. fun to watch, but yeah. man, Green Room freaks me out. I I, th- I think the thing is feels like, so Ant- believable. <laughs> Anton's character, I think, really makes all the choices I would make. It, it, not when he like does smart things, but like because he's trying to like placate the situation. Like his way of dealing with these people is to like be like, let's just be cool. Let's just not right. rock the boat, and that's exactly what I would do. And uh, the the movie, if it, anyone has this, it's a it's a band, a punk band, on tour. They end up playing this like uh, neo Nazi venue, um, and then things go wrong in a very Bad realistic way. way. Yeah. And I think there will be a lot of people saying like, well, why would they even play the neo Nazi thing? And and I will tell you, as someone uh, who's who's done tours and shitty little bands trying to make gas money. You'll play just about <laughs> anywhere, man, and like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, just it's it's just too believable, too too freaky. Uh, I was gonna say too freaky for me, but I've watched it like a bunch. So well, and and certainly not to get not not to, not to be political at all, but certainly in the day and age we're dealing with with the Proud Boys and QAnon and stuff, dude, it feels very believable, very and, very believable, and um. I, I like watching people kill Nazis. I'm just yeah. I, I will get political enough to say. <laughs> I don't think that's a I don't think that's a bad stance to take. And no, no matter what, <laughs> I I know I'm gonna get canceled for it. I don't like Nazis. Uh, so you so like me on record earlier. You are on record with hating Nazis. <laughs> <sighs> Man, it's gonna come back to bite me. I'm sure, but <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I, and I'll tell you also, Django Unchained kind of hits different right now too. oh yeah That's absolutely movie yeah. to watch uh uh don't you know what i'll even i i don't like slave owners well uh, okay I, I'm not, I, hey, I mean my if views you, yeah, are you, not i i'm just a guest <laughs> on here i'm not expressing the views of pop culture bombcast yeah. i'm only speaking for me uh not a fan of uh racist and, and slave owners and nazis well, hey, it, you heard it here, um, and it's your stance to take. I'm certainly not going to try to wa- you know, waver you on your decisions, but I, uh, if that's the way you want to be, that's the way you want to be. Not on air, not on air. Look, <laughs> I've, I've got screenshots of all the messages, uh, all of your, all your ones that, that start out like, um, well, you know, right. actually. You, you, we can't even go, like, you can't even joke about what the joke could be on that one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I would never. Uh, yeah, so it, it, I, you know, I, I didn't, I certainly didn't think we would go in this hard into scary stuff. This may be uh, of all the. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I, no. <laughs> this may be of all the episodes we've ever done. I've ever I've done, and this will be the 215th, actually 300th episode if you add some of the specials. Um, um, 300 and something. Uh, this may be the deepest into. Stuff that a good chunk of my listeners may not know about than we've ever had. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, which which is uh, fine with me. Well, I'm I have, uh, I'm excited for. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, like a nerd like a nerd thing like a 
Yeah, well, I tell you this, give, we've give them a taste. You know? We've been going, uh, we've been going over an hour. Um, so we, you know, at this point, I I do the throw it to Missy segment where we talk about the quick hit stuff that we don't go too deep into. Um, which Where's I, Missy? she she's upstairs. Uh, she has, uh, she's hurt her back this week. She can't even okay. play volleyball tomorrow night. So she did not want to sit or stand at the in the stools. I, okay, all right. Yeah, and and you, Matt, but you'll tell her that I'm very upset. Yeah, I, and I, you know, I don't want to tell her the real reason. She doesn't like your stance on slave owners. It's she's against. I, it. Look, we've butted heads on this so many times, <laughs> and I've told her I won't bring it up. Uh, but I guess she didn't you believe. Should, and you know what? Here I am bringing it up. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah, I guess she was. There's right. egg on she your right. face. Uh, hey, you. We talked about the stuff that we saw when we were uh, things that were when we were young. Uh, there's a new show coming on, and I don't expect it to be great. Um, but certainly has a very charismatic character it's based on. Have you seen the trailer for Young Rock? Yes. Yeah. The I want to watch it purely because a, on the commercials, they have nailed the classic wrestlers. Like the whoever they're casting okay. and doing it. Like even the Andre the Giant, which you can never pull off an Andre the Giant. They've done a good enough job to where I'm like, you know, I'm going to give this okay. show a chance. Uh Hey, man, like I said earlier, anything has the potential to be good. That's so, right. Who knows? We, we also, another show that we started, uh, the second episode was last night, so I haven't watched it, but uh, we had a big theme, an undercurrent last week on my show and, and, and text messages of how great Alan Tudyk is. And Oh, and the... Resident Alien. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't. I, I, I would like to see that. I, it's, I the... it's got promise. It's as funny and silly as you think it was going to be. But it's very dark. <laughs> like it's not. It's not like he's not a hero. So you right. Know. Yeah, that sounds good yeah. to me. What about you? What do you have that you've recently been watching or doing, or what are you looking forward to? Uh, we've been, we've been all all movies lately. Uh, we, we have been going through some like series. Like we we're wanting to watch all the wrong turns, which is a fun thing to do. You know, like uh, especially with horror movies. Uh, we watched all the. Um, you 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 had just watched them too. Uh, we just talked about it on on Messenger. <laughs> it's a horror movie series, Black Christmas. Oh yeah 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 right? yeah yeah. With it? the remake and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah the so multiple two, remakes. Yeah yeah. We watched all of those and. Uh, I, I forget. Um, what did you think of the newest one? It was awful. Yeah, it was really bad. It's so bad, and uh, it loses the creepiness. Of, even the the '90s one, or whenever it was, or the late mid 2000s It was like two thousand. It was way more recent than it recent. should have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah for it, for another reason. Neither of those, and and uh, my bloody Valentine did not do a good job with this. They don't capture the grit like we were talking about with Last House on the Left. That's what made those scary. Yeah. What well, one thing we've been watching too, like like the burning and stuff. We've been watching a lot of movies that. Um, are before sort of the like blueprint is a s- totally firmly established. Oh you yeah, know? and it's it's really interesting because the burning is one of those where it's um, pre Friday the Thirteenth. I right is that right? I, it's I think so. It's, yes. well, yeah, because I look burning and say, but, but the blueprint okay. was established because of how much money Friday the Thirteenth made. Yeah, it, and, and it's like because because before that you had Halloween, Halloween, and which, very original movies. They could have just copied Halloween. Yeah. I feel like they were still trying to... But, like, they introduce all these characters, and you're sitting there going, like, oh, he that one's going to be the this guy, and that one's yeah. going to be... He's going to get it this way. But it they don't, like, follow that the way you would think they would because it's, like, not... Th- there's definitely a character that you're like, oh, they're going to blame him yeah. for the people dying, and that just doesn't happen at all. The hot-headed uh, town jock is always yeah. going to be... <laughs> And it's it's just a really weird. Uh, it's it's interesting to watch movies like that, like like The Burning and uh, what else we've we been doing. We we I just watched the last movie we watched was that uh, The Devil All the Time. Netflix. Oh yeah, how was that? I, it's on my queue. I just haven't watched it. Uh, I I liked it. Uh, I I think um, the the book. That's Tom is, Holland. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Spider Man. Yep. Uh, the book is very <laughs> the Jewish like, superhero. There's almost no main character like it's it's a it's different like vignettes okay that that come together at the end everybody's connected uh at the end um and uh the the movie sort of makes 
Tom Holland more of a main character uh, than he had the vibe of in, in the book. Um, so I think it makes like it's almost weird they have to spend too much time on on what would be secondary characters. It it, it feels a little uneven and weird because it's based on this book where everybody had almost the same amount of backstory and stuff. But uh, I liked it. I think the vibe was a little less uh, gritty than, than the book. Um, but that, that author, Donald, Donald Ray Pollock, I think, uh, really good, uh, really good. Yeah, author. I'll have to I, check I, I like that out. Stuff. We watched, uh, what did we watch? Uh, uh, the, that's gotten some pub. Lately, oh, uh, on HBO Max, we watched the little things. Uh, Denzel and I, Remy Malik, and uh, again, uh, talking about Jared Leto earlier. Jared Leto, uh, that was a very good movie. That was it was worth I, watching. I tell you, J- Jared, uh, he, he's another one who's um, he's a weirdo, so people don't like him. But I think he's a good actor. Forty nine years old. Yeah, the age, aging well. Yeah, and I, 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 I do think he's a full on weirdo, but. Uh, yeah, he no. he's done. There's some stories about things he's done on sets and stuff that make it, uh, you know, a little a little suspect. The guy's true. The guy that directed it, although I I like his uh um the director was John Lee Hancock, and he's known for um just a very weird amount of movies. Like he did uh, Saving Mr. Banks, The Rookie, The Blind Side, and then Netflix as The High Women, and I'm like. Well, this guy's pretty uh, diverse in the type of movie he makes. <laughs> like, yeah, it, really. He's just trying different things. He'll yeah. find his. It's a good movie. Niche. It's a good movie. It's uh, it's a good movie too, where it leaves you debating on is he or is he not the person. Okay. Uh, so it's it's and Denzel, you know, Denzel's Denzel Washington. He's going to go down as one of the greatest actors, uh, you know, of his generation, if not the greatest. Uh, but man, Remy Malik and Jared Leto are, are awesome. And yeah. I was when as the movie started, I was not convinced that I liked Remy Malik in the movie. I was like, he still seems too Freddie Mercury in the way he talks to me. Like okay. it doesn't make. And as the movie kept going, I kind of forgot about it. And I was like, well, the back and forth is in the breaking down of what's going on with him is just awesome. He's a good actor. Yeah, I, I, I uh, he's one of those guys that yeah, I'm excited to see more so i i can't watch i don't like uh particularly like music biopic movies yeah. i just think they're all the same and like i enjoyed so, the elton john one uh but that's a little different right yeah because they did it as a musical um and it was a very small they just did some flashbacks my problem with bohemian rhapsody was that it um it was impossible to tell the story of how much time that they were gonna go through I just I hate the thing that's like yeah they have to do it which is I think why I don't like basically all of them but you know it'll be like it'll be they'll do they'll have a scene and it's like hmm I uh heard that the queen uh had a do- got a new dog today and they're like queen yeah hey we sh- that's our we'll call our band queen uh boy I can't think of I'm, the Motley Crue one did I'm, that. The Motley Crue one. I'm on Queen songs right now. <laughs> <That's but okay. laughs> I'm trying to do, but you know, they'll, they'll be like, they just condense yeah. everything into these like moments where it's like, I, I bet it wasn't quite yeah. like, like it's, it's always great. Like when the kid is uh, like in the beginning of the movie, not, not, I don't think that this is real, but like where the kid for Christmas gets a, gets a space shuttle and he's flying it around and then flash forward yes. and he's on the, the doomed flight to you know Mars or whatever. It's right. like it's, it's just like all this like right. You're you're condensing all these things into like these clandestine moments. Uh, yeah, which definitely you know it just feels so like that doesn't feel real. Oh, right. <laughs> it does, does feel like yeah, the, yeah. you're you're taking for granted a lot of what went into making the band and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. It's that easy. You guys should have never had to tour places like in the green room. You should have just yeah, been big. Really. <laughs> I, I should have. Yeah. Someone should have said a little phrase and then I turn and give a little look and I say the phrase and then you hard cut to us playing that song right. to a million people. Yeah. Well, you still got time. I, 
still got time. <laughs> and then we're in the next step. That's our ballad. That's our ballad. That's the song. That's we're playing it. Uh, well, since we just now became uh, super celebrities with our mm-hmm. new rock band that we just formed, and I have no musical abilities whatsoever other than my ability to foreshadow. Um, yeah, there's always a manager in yeah, the movie yeah. or something like that. Like I'll be that, a roadie. I'm a big guy. I can do security. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we're gonna, we'll, we'll wrap it up. We've been an hour and a half. Uh, I sent you a message two days ago. And said, this week you got away from me, and I don't have anything to talk about. Do you want to come on? And I think we knocked it out of the park. This was uh, – I'm going to give it uh, eight – well, seven, seven out of ten. Um, point Missy didn't yeah. come. Yeah. So that's – I mean, it would have been a ten out of ten, but uh, – uh, that's interesting. She doesn't seem to want to be on the episodes that I'm on. Uh, <laughs> take it very personally. And uh, and she came on your show and, and did very little talking. That's fine. I, just knowing she's there right. is, is all is all I need. I've, I, I've long told my wife, uh, and, and I don't want to be on record for being chauvinistic, but I've long told my wife, uh, you're just here for the window dressing. Uh, you know. A little, little eye candy for the podcast. Yeah, I that's totally it. Understand. I mean, yeah. I, I, no one even needs to. Yeah, eye candy for a podcast. That's what we do. Right. That's, that's why Courtney, yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's why I'm not successful because I have eye candy on something that is broadcast and for a listening format only. Oh, I never. Th- oh, shit. Yeah, I should do more videos. That's I what I should do. I never thought about that. That's what we say about Courtney. She's, she's the eye candy. Cans for days can't, won't quit. Huh. <laughs> and there we- you can't. That's a good point. You can't see her yeah well you've given me a lot to think about I... and a new song oh wait i still well, got time I, she oh, still, yeah, still got time it's uh, gonna cut to me going i can't remember what he said well i'm going to i'm gonna go ahead and stop the record button so you tell everybody oh by the way for those that don't know i guess we can at least do this uh, i i owe it to you after an hour and a half of rambling about scary movies with me um mad f basler podcast uh mad f basler on uh the facebooks um, the, the you're on all the stuff, the Instagrams Every, and all that. And it's yeah, the yeah. same everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So so get check him out. Um, you well, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say any more than that. Just tell everybody. All right, thanks for coming on. Tell everybody bye. Bye. And uh, I'm gonna hit the stop button.